Hello students, let us start the second physical feature of India, the Northern Plains. In the previous video, we learned about the Himalayas. In this video, we will learn in detail about the Northern Plains. When we talk about the plains, we remember a playground. Okay, usually a playground is plain in level with no obstruction to play games. So you have all seen grounds. Grounds are very flat. They do not have any obstructions in between. Okay. Similarly, there are plains located to the south of the Himalayan ranges. So as we can see, the plains are located to the south of the Himalayan ranges over here. So the Himalayas are over here and the plains shown here in green color are located to the south of the Himalayas. They are very vast, fertile and in level. So they are very vast in area. They are very fertile for agriculture and they are flat. Okay, so they are in level. Locate this physical division on the map. So let us find out about this physical division in the map of India. So as we can see here, it is shown in green color. And we just learned that it is located to the north of the Himalayas, which are located in this area. Next, the northern plains of India are formed by the deposition of alluvium carried by the rivers while flowing from the Himalayan ranges. So, alluvium is a very fertile deposit of clay, sand and silt that is bought by rivers. Okay, so it can be considered as a very fertile soil. And the rivers which take origin in the Himalayas, so you can see here very well that they have shown us a number of rivers. So here we have the Yamuna River and its tributaries. And here we have River Ganges. Okay, so similarly, we have the Brahmaputra River located over here. And all these rivers, what they do is they flow from the top of the Himalayas and they bring down fertile soil and deposit in these plains. Okay, so these plains have the very fertile deposition of alluvium. These plains are situated between the Himalayan mountains and the peninsular plateau. So before we go on to this, I will show you an image of what alluvium looks like. So, as you can see here, alluvium is a very fertile deposit and it is bought by floodwaters of rivers. It is a wet kind of soil as you can see here. You can also imagine it to be muddy. Okay, so this is an example for alluvium. Next, we just learned that the northern plains are located between the Himalayan range and the Peninsular Plateau. So here we have the Himalayan range as shown here and the Peninsular Plateau is also known as the Deccan Plateau which is located over here. So the northern plains are present in between the Peninsular Plateau and the Himalayan range. So next the Sutlej, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra and their tributaries flow through this plains. Okay. Now let us go back and take a look at our map. So I'll just zoom this in for you so you can see this better. Okay, so here we have the map of the Northern Plains and as you can see here, you can see all the rivers that are present here. First we have the Sutlej River and we have its tributaries. Next we have the Ganga River and its tributaries. So Ganga River is here. Okay. We have many other rivers and their tributaries that flow through the northern plains. Now let us go back. The soil of these plains is very fertile due to the deposition of alluvium by the rivers. So we learned that alluvium is the deposit that is carried by the rivers and is deposited onto the plains. It contains clay, sand and silt. This deposit is very fertile. Okay. So the crops such as wheat, paddy, maize, sugarcane are grown in the northern plains. 
these fertile plains are known as the food storehouse of india next observe whenever there are river plains there are there is plenty of water therefore agriculture rearing of animals transport facilities trade commerce industries are developed so the major aspect that you need to develop any of these is a good water source and river plains have plenty of water which is why it has promoted the development of all these facilities next the different types of physical features have influence on the tradition and culture of the people in that area many towns in the cities of the harappa civilization have developed on the river banks okay so harappan civilization is an ancient civilization which was also situated near the northern plains even now there are many famous historical cities and pilgrimage places situated on the river banks on account of the ideal condition for settlement many empires ruled in the northern plains so to be brief the bottom line is that the northern plains are very fertile so in turn it promotes the development of agriculture rearing of animals transport facilities trade commerce industries etc this is why people prefer to live in the northern plains because of the idealistic conditions in ancient times as well many civilization and historical cities had their capitals in the northern plains for example the mauryan mogal and gupta empires so you will learn about these empires in your higher classes next observe these pictures where do you find them in india mention the places so they have given us images and we need to go through them one by one to mention where we can find them so the first two belong to the ashokan empire and they can be found first one in bihar in the place called vaishali the next one in qutub minar called qutub minar in delhi okay so these two are some of the known capitals of ashoka next we have the red fort which is in delhi and the next one all of you will know this this is taj mahal this is present in agra finally we have the ruins of the nalanda which is in bihar so what you can observe about these is almost all of them are located near the northern plains okay so in this area all the images are located in the northern plains the plains are more helpful for the growth of agriculture since these regions have level land it is easy to construct big buildings the availability of different types of rocks sand metal wood plant fiber soil ideal site craftsmen etc also helped in the development of architecture okay so what do you need to develop big big buildings like this number 1 you need land okay so the land should support the architecture next you need materials okay so you need materials like rock sand metal etc finally you need people so craftsmen and craftswomen are also very important okay so all of these are present in the northern plains this is why for example huge palaces were constructed in rajasthan the taj mahal in agra was built by using marble rock so here we have the taj mahal and as we all know it is built using marble rock next observe the inner walls of kollur dharmasthala kukke subramanya temples in karnataka are made of wood so here they are just highlighting how different areas of india have been influenced by the availability of materials so in karnataka wood was abundantly available which is why it was used in the construction of different buildings including the inner walls of very famous temples okay houses in kashmir are built using logs buildings are constructed using kadappa rocks in raichur district of karnataka and parts of andhra pradesh so in parts of karnataka and andhra pradesh 
Kadappa rock was available. So people made use of it. It is as simple as you make use of what is available to you. Okay. In recent years, red granite rocks are used for the construction of buildings in Bagalkot and surroundings. Belur and Halebid in Karnataka and most of the temples in Tamil Nadu have been built using soapstone. Okay. Next, sandstone cave temples are found in Badami of Karnataka. So these are different materials which we can use for the construction of buildings and they are very highly influenced by the availability of natural resources. Next, let us answer the following questions. The northern plains are fertile. Give reason. So the main reason for this is because the rivers they bring in alluvium and they deposit them into the northern plains. It, they are very fertile. So, alluvium deposited by rivers flowing into the northern plains. So, this is the reason why the northern plains are very fertile. Next, the people prefer to live in the plains of a river. Why is that so? So, this is because like we learned, Due to availability of water, agriculture, animal rearing, transport facilities, industries, etc. can be, can flourish. Okay. This is why people prefer to live in the plains of a river. Because of the highly fertile soil, agriculture is promoted and this leads to development of different activities that can be supported by agriculture such as animal rearing, transport facilities, industries etc. This is why people prefer to live in the banks of a river. Next, make a list of the important rivers and crops in our state. So, in Karnataka, we have to make a list of the rivers and crops. I am going to leave this as an activity to you. In fact, we have explained this in detail in the lesson Agriculture. I will just leave that link in the description box below. You can refer to that in case you have any doubt. Next question. Mark the river Ganga, Brahmaputra, Yamuna on the outline map of India. Okay, so let us go back to our map and let me zoom in again for you. So, they want us to mark Ganga, Yamuna and Brahmaputra. So, let me just take another color so that you can see better. Okay, so firstly, let us find the river Ganga. So, here we have the Ganga river. Okay, and we have the Yamuna river right here down below. Next, we have the Brahmaputra river present over here. Okay. Next, a challenge to you. Discuss in groups. It is very essential to maintain cleanliness on the banks of rivers. Now, the rivers of India are affected by water pollution. The harmful activity of human beings destroy the sources of drinking water which is essential for life. Do you know how rivers are polluted? You have to discuss with your friends and figure out how rivers are polluted. Okay? So firstly, plastics, several types of toxic waste and effluent of industries are dumped into the river water. Idols or images painted with different chemical paints are immersed in the river water. So we can observe this during different festivals. The chemical effluents which are released by industries are let into the river water. Okay, so the chemical effluents or the waste water from the industries they are let into the river water. Big cities produce a large amount of garbage in different forms which is thrown into the rivers and the water gets 
contaminated. Okay. Mining activities also cause pollution of rivers. For example, Kali, Badra, etc. So if there is a mining area present near the rivers, this can also lead to the pollution of rivers. So these are the different reasons why rivers are polluted. Next, now the Ganga River water cleaning program is under progress. Is it not correct to do this? What are the benefits of cleaning river water right here? Okay, so one reason is Ganga water is a source of water for the population of northern plains. So many people are dependent on the river water for their requirements. Okay, and using polluted water leads to several ill effects. The benefits of cleaning river water is that there will be a supply of clean water for all the people who depend upon it. Okay. Okay, students. So, this is the end of this module. So, we completed the Northern Plains.